fun, and he is indeed Jim Struzzi from the Indiana County Chamber of Commerce joining us this morning and getting set for a very big event. Jim, you've got the Leaders Circle coming up. Good morning, Todd. Yes, we do. This coming Wednesday, we are excited to be part of the 2017 Leader Circle Awards event. As you know, it's an annual event for Indiana County where we recognize the male and female civic leaders, the uh, Athena recipient. And this year, we're going to start something new with the Young Athena Award. So it's a very exciting time. Yeah, and we've been uh, interviewing some of the nominees. In fact, we'll have a couple of more tomorrow morning, and that yes. should be it because I think we got everybody. Well, that's good. We do appreciate the support. But more more importantly, these people really deserve the recognition. As you know, these are the people that really are, are the backbone of Indiana County. They're humble. They go out and do what they need to do to make this a better place for all of us. And how important is it that we do things such as this to recognize people in terms of inspiring others to step up and be leaders as well? Well, if you ask any of them, they'll tell you that they don't do this for any sort of recognition. It's more about doing the right thing for other people, making a difference in the lives of other people. And a lot of these people work for nonprofits or are affiliated with nonprofits. Po- profits, excuse me. I think it's uh, of the utmost importance because that's what makes Indiana County great. It's the people who care about people. And by recognizing these people, we hope that that fosters even more people to step up and do the right things, volunteer for community service, become community leaders, and make a difference for Indiana County. I think one of the things that has impressed me most about the Leader Circle nominees this year and every year yes, is that they, for the most part, all have jobs or had jobs. Yes. And some yes. of them are retired. But having jobs, they still volunteer their time to serve on boards and, uh, and with organizations, but not just to serve on a board and come to a meeting or two. They actually get out there and they're hands-on people. Well, they sure are, and that's why they're being recognized. These are the people that, that take it upon themselves to do the right thing, to help others, to help their community, uh, not because it's part of their job duties, uh, but because it's something that they know is the right thing to do for our, our friends and neighbors in Indiana County. So Leader Circle is coming up Wednesday, Indiana it's Country Club? Wednesday night at the Indiana Country Club. Any tickets available yet? I'm not sure. I know we're pretty close to being sold out, but if you can uh, go to the Leader Circle Facebook page, uh, I think it's just Leader Circle of Indiana County, uh, you can find out more information there. Or give us a call down at the chamber, 724-465-2511. There you go. That's a good idea. All right. So Leader Circle is one thing we need to talk about today. There are other things happening in the Indiana County business and industry uh, circle here. Well, there. <laughs> there are a lot of things happening right now, Todd, which is uh, exciting. This is a busy time of year for the Chamber, for uh, a lot of different uh, nonprofits in the community that are out fundraising. Uh, tomorrow night, though, something really exciting. We're going to help cut a ribbon for two new boat launches in Blairsville. Yeah. And that, that has an economic impact because, you know, the more accessible you can make the Connemaw River, the more people that can come to Blairsville, to Indiana County, to take part in that water recreation. Every year, we we do our paddle and picnic. We did our third uh, annual paddle and picnic event in Blairsville this past May, and we'll do another one in May of 2018. But it's always a challenge to get in and out of the water. You basically have to shove your boat uh, off the the, the, the muddy uh, shoreline, mm-hmm. get in the water, and then do the same thing to get out, but not anymore. Now they have this really nice boat uh, launch and, and boat exit, I guess, from the river. So tomorrow night at 515, we're going to go down and celebrate the, a ribbon cutting for these boat launches in Blairsville. I had to laugh the other day when the work was finally completed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's sort of when you put your hummingbird feeder up in the spring and you wonder yeah. if the hummingbirds are going to come and all of a sudden For a sure. couple of them show up. Well, they put this thing and they finally completed the work. And as they're standing there, here come two kayakers. They just rode right in. That's awesome. And that's, that's exactly what they're after. Is For sure. And that. the more easily accessible it is, the more people are going to come, the more people are going to spend time in Blairsville and Indiana County. And they're going to bring tourism dollars, economic dollars into Indiana County. Yeah, that's that's a big, big thing. So the ribbon cutting's tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, 515. It's... Uh, I, um, it's the boat launch that's just down from where the Blairsville Community Development Authority is, which if you are familiar with Blairsville, the gazebo uh, and the, mm-hmm. uh, the traffic circle that's there, it's down to the right along the water. Yeah, where the old Vale Tech buildings used to yes. stand. All right, so that's, that's very, very exciting news for Indiana County. And just talks, You know, that's not a huge multi-million dollar type of thing, project. Uh, like the highway projects right, that we right, talk right. about. But still, those little things become big things because they're the ones that attract other people. Well, it's a stepping stone, too, Todd, because Blairsville and Indiana County overall, we have great trails. Uh, we have great outdoor recreation. This is another component in bringing people here to connect all that together. So you can come for an all-day experience, perhaps an overnight experience. So when you come to Indiana County, you have multiple choices of outdoor recreation. And that's big uh, for right now and quality of life for millennials who 
who want to come live somewhere to work. Uh, those are important factors. So we, all these things combine to, to help bring people to Indiana County, perhaps keep people in Indiana County, and, and ultimately even attract more businesses. Yeah, I know the uh, White Township supervisors last week were talking about the Hoodlebug extension and, yes. and the multimodal uh, thing that they're they're considering as well, and that they've committed to. So those are those are things happening here in Indiana County in terms of business and industry. What else are you hearing out there? Well, we're excited. Uh, our board meeting was last week, the Chamber's Board of Directors. Um, we heard some updates. Uh, there's a lot of things, and I know we continue to say there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes, but there really are. A lot of big opportunities could be coming along here in the near future, uh, specifically at Windy Ridge Business and Technology Park. There's a lot of inquiry about that right now, mm-hmm. uh, and, and we're really, really um, hopeful that some big announcements can be made here in the very near future. Yeah, that's going to be exciting stuff. Uh, and, and what a great location. You've it, got, it absolutely is. You've got 422 right there. And- and uh, 422 connects onto 119, four lanes. Yes. Uh, and it, and that's just tremendous because that connects to 22. Yes. And it sort of puts the whole puzzle together. It does. And, and that's just another component of the overall business community. We, we hear reports from other businesses that are growing, that are expanding. Manufacturing continues to do well this year. Although some businesses have had to, to reinvent themselves to some extent to come up with new products and, and services to meet the, the changing demands of the co- economy. Uh, but, but everything seems to be moving in the right direction. And obviously, there are some sectors that are struggling here and there, mm-hmm. uh, retail uh, to be one of them. But we continue to work hard as a Chamber of Commerce, as the Center for Economic Operations, to try and bring more people here, to bring more business here. Ultimately, you need people. Uh, and the more people we have here, the more money that will be spent on retail, retail here locally. But they have to have a reason to come. And that's where the jobs come in. And again, back to the outdoor recreation. That's what millennials uh, have indicated that they want to see where they live. They want places where they can walk, where they can have arts, arts and culture, mm-hmm. but all within a, a, a radius where they don't have to use uh, different modes of transportation. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to me when you look up and down Philadelphia Street, which is so beautiful here in Indiana now. Yes. And, and you see what's been done there. You look on the IUP camp. Uh, and then you see other communities doing what they can to make their places more attractive. Yes. That brings people in, but at the same time, you're also looking to say, okay, this this will bring people in to visit. We need to find things that are going to keep people here. And Absolutely. That's, that's jobs, and jobs really go back to manufacturing. That is the job market. and. I know you talked to Kevin Laser um, once a week or so, and he's he's continuously indicating that there are jobs out there, and there are jobs out there uh, across the board in various sectors: healthcare, manufacturing. They're looking for employees. The challenge is uh, finding people who actually want to work, yeah. uh, and that's something that we're we're dealing with also is in, in relation to workforce development, uh, getting people to have the right work ethic, working with the school districts even at the, the younger levels to try and instill those those good um, work ethics into young people coming into the marketplace. So uh, work. Workforce is always an issue, but the jobs are out there for people who want to work. So we need to get people here uh, that are good, uh, hardworking individuals. It's amazing how connected the world is from the, the earliest childhood all the way up through your Well, work it life. is. And, and, you know, being the chamber president, you get a unique perspective. I'm on, you know, uh, numerous boards and advisory councils. So I, I get the big picture. I, I see where the needs are, uh, where, where the, 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 the gaps need to be filled. Uh, but, but we're working on it, Todd. We're getting toward the end of the month of September. Uh, uh, this is the the middle portion week, and, yeah. and and we'll soon be at the end of it. You've got, of course, at the end of the end of the year of the uh, the annual meeting. Yes, coming up, and I know that uh, you're pretty excited about that. Well, we sure are. December first, uh, that's Friday again at the Cavalcha Complex, with the pre reception starting at eleven, with the luncheon at noon. Um, we're we're super excited. Thanks to your help um, through Renda Broadcasting, we are able to secure. Uh, Travis Williams, who is the chief operating officer for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, we're already selling tables. We're already taking reservations and sponsorships. Uh, people are really excited this year to, to hear what uh, Mr. Williams has to say. From a business standpoint, we, we really want to know what it takes to be a successful sports franchise year after year. You know, What business moves do they make? How is their management structured? I think that's going to be a, a really interesting um, keynote presentation from Travis Williams, so we're excited. One of the interesting things that the Penguins do, and we we deal with all of the sports organizations. Right. Um, the Penguins are the most interactive and, and do the most outreach to their affiliates, their broadcast yes. affiliates, of, of any of the sports teams. Really? Every single day, even after practice, we get a big package of audio cuts and other materials wow. about the Penguins. That's Every great. game day, there's a game day sheet that comes out. Mm-hmm. They really do reach out, and what they're doing is they're wanting their affiliates to mm-hmm. be able to talk to their listeners mm-hmm. to market the penguins and and 
it really works. You, you compare them to the other sports organizations, and they're far and away above everybody else, and other businesses can learn from that model. Yeah, and we're really excited, Todd, and, and I'm not promising anything, but the Penguins are home that week, and they are off on that Friday. So we're encouraging uh, Travis Williams to bring himself and maybe a few other people who might want to come along. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, that'd be a good deal. Uh, folks can get tickets for that yet? Yes, we are already taking reservations. Call us at the Chamber, 724-465-2511. Go on our website, indianacountychamber.com. Uh, subscribe to the weekly email. Uh, there's always information in there about the annual luncheon coming up. We're already getting ready for the Business Expo, uh, which is going to be on January 27th, 2018, again at the Indiana Mall. All sorts of things happening in the business community right now. And the best way to, to find out about it is to become part of the Chamber. There you go. He's Jim Struzzi from the Chamber of Commerce. Thanks again. Thank you, Todd. It's Indiana in the Morning here on AM 1160 WCCS FM 101.1. Good morning to you.